So Richard, uh, are we going to talk about the data storage now? Uh, you're muted. Yes, data storage. Yes. Um, so. Or should we well, jump straight into interactive jobs? Hmm. Or maybe we should mention the data storage because yeah. that's quite important. Should we take a look? Yes. So, uh, so data storage uh, is is like, well, it's one of the ba basic things that you need when when you go to a system. First, of course, you need to have the system and you need to uh, have the machines there, uh, and then you need the applications that you need to run there. Uh, but of course, you will need your stuff there as well, like your code your results, your initial data, stuff like that. So you need to store them somewhere. And and in uh, so this isn't very, uh, like like it says here, it's, it isn't very glamorous, but it's, it's an integral part of the whole system there, that you have the data there and you access it uh, in a like optimized way or the best way possible. So. Uh, these are very sp site uh, specific, so different sites have different uh, uh, guides. I uh, highly recommend checking the different sites guide, but but the basic idea is the same on all of the systems. So usually, well, well, basic things apply again to all the systems. And here, uh, the, well, we could quickly go through the different types of data or different places that we have for data. In, in these kinds of clusters. So first of all, uh, when you connect to a cluster, uh, you usually are in your home folder. Uh, quickly arrange, rearrange this. So you can see here I'm at my, uh, like the, this tilde <laughs> tells that, uh, or this pwd command will tell me that I'm in my home folder when I connect to this. And this home folder is, is like this kind of a shared your own folder where you can put your uh, SSH keys and uh, stuff like that um, that we mentioned before. Uh, so this is meant for like, like this is something that is always always there and it's meant for having your like configuration files. So basically uh, like, uh, yeah, it's main, main, mainly for configuration files uh, and stuff like that is, so uh, it's basically like the operating system partition of your computer. And then you have a data data part that is like where you actually have the data. But this is like the, the part where you have your your documents and like like uh, your documents and downloads and stuff like that. And maybe some, some pieces of code there. Uh, but then we have the major part of the system and that, that is the scratch disk or the work direct directory. And that is, uh, well, it depends on the site, but in our case, in Alta, we have this fast Lustre system uh, that is meant for like, that is like this parallel file system that is meant for high throughput and high performance. Uh, and that is so, meant for your calculation data. So how high of throughput and how high performance is it compared to, let's say, a modern consumer grade SSD disk? Yes. So basically, in this case, it's like uh, like we're talking about um, like um, multiple giga gigabits per second uh, or gigabytes per second, uh, like like tw uh, twenty gigabytes of reading, writing constantly throughout the file system. Uh, so of course, that's lower. Like you might think that that's lower than an SSD, but the problem is that like when you get into like very high capacity uh, disks. When you get in, into very high capacities, uh, you need to make all kinds of like uh, security things, uh, or like um, you may you need to make certain that if any of the disks, actual physical disks in the system fail, there's no like you, the cluster doesn't go down basically. So there's all kinds of like these kind of a uh, 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 well, uh, well, what all kinds of failover things. That similar to to the to the fastly thing should like work if if something breaks like the system shouldn't go down so similarly to that uh, they apparently they had some place in their system that was like a single point of failure that took uh, a lot of the internet down and we want to make certain that the file system if one disk fails 
uh, it doesn't go down the whole file system. So this file system is meant for like, oh, it's designed for big data, uh, big data that is read like in big chunks. That is basically, that. that is the typical use case or, or the optimal use case for this file system. And the size in Alto, it's uh, two petabytes. We are getting a new file system uh, that is five petabytes uh, and will be even more, have even more throughput. But basically this is like very big, big system that is shared among all of the compute nodes. So basically all of the calculations that are supposed to be done on this system. Um, and so, so basically you have the home folder, what is basically just like to make certain that you can log in if, even if the file system would be down or something like that, it rarely happens, but just in case, like you have the home folder for your own personal uh, scripts, your SSH keys and stuff like that. Then you have the scratch disk, and this is usually separated to like your own user space and then to a project directories. And the project directories are, well, your groups, directories, your, uh, if you're collaborating on a paper or something like that, you have, might have a project directory for that collaboration, uh, like places for shared, shared files and you have your own folder that is for you uh, alone. Uh, at, then there's some of the nodes, like most of our nodes nowadays are diskless, so they don't have any disks. They, the whole, whole operating system is, is in the um, memory of the, of the system or of the node, but some of the systems also have local disks that you can use for fast IO operations. But uh, well, we'll talk about that, especially on the GPU uh, computing side. Uh, at Alto, we also have these other, uh, like these uh, uh, other places, like on your workstation, you might have your Alto home directory, your like these teamwork project folders and archive folders. And these are separate to tri from Triton. They are like Alto side, but on login node, you can access these, but they are not meant for like doing calculations on. So the, the shared file system is meant for like the calculations and stuff like that. Those are meant for like longer term storage. Um, in ge general, uh, you don't need to think about that much about like uh, the file system itself. Uh, you just use it. Uh, you just store data there and then you just use it. But sometimes it's a good idea. Like some in some cases you might cause problems uh, because this file system similarly to the login node is used by everybody. It's used by the whole cluster. And if you think about the cluster, it's hundreds of nodes. And a, like sometimes if you have certain kind of prog prog um, programs, the programs might have like this kind of bad IO patterns. So what I mean, it, they might load like hundreds of thousands of files or they might uh, write hundreds of thousands of files or something like that. And that might cause problem for the whole file system. And uh, you usually want to avoid this by, well, asking us usually, <laughs> like, uh, what what could I do to improve it? Uh, but but there are many tricks and tricks and trips, uh, uh, many helpful hints here in our documentation. What you could do, so you could uh, check how much um, I/O they're creating and stuff, and such forth. So how much I/O is so small? It doesn't matter. Like, at what level would someone have to get to before you'd say they should talk to us or think about it deeply mm -hmm. themselves? That's a very good question. So, so I think the main point is like, if it's human readable, that's uh, not not a problem usually. Like, if if you can read it, the computer can read it as well. That's not a problem. But uh, if if it's like a if you scale it up, let's say like a simple example would be to, to you have a Python code that runs on like it reads thousand input files, big whoop, like it reads thousand files. But let's say you want to run the same program hundred times in the same same cluster. In that case, like you might uh, you uh, read the thousand files hundred times, so you get hundred thousand files current uh, suddenly read. So, so in that kind of, you need to think about the, um, 
like uh, in the context of what you're doing and and like basically multiplying by the amount of times you're doing doing the uh, stuff so usually the yeah, problem like... becomes when you have individual files that are over 100 gigabytes or something like that uh or the, yeah yeah 100 right. gigabytes maybe I sometimes say like a thousand files is nothing for the computer, but if you have a thousand files and you read the same thing a thousand times, which is mm. trivial to do with shell scripting and mm. slurm as we'll learn, then you start to yeah. get to an issue. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's like the the uh, the story of the uh, chessboard with rice on it, like like you put put one bit of rice on the first piece of chessboard, two piece, uh, two rice grains on the second uh, square in the chessboard, and then you go forward, and then, then you get like uh, exponential behavior, and and these kinds of things can happen very fast in clusters. So if you if you do something uh, m multiple times. Uh, multiple times and then you might get into this kind of like exponential curve or, or square square curve or this kind of like uh, behavior where you suddenly something that wasn't problem becomes a problem so so usually you want to think about this is like uh, like is it is it something that either has a like a high uh, amount high multiplier basically like you're going to be doing it a lot of times or is the single uh, pro write really big or single like um, single use really big. So if your program every time it runs, it generates like a terabyte of data. <laughs> you you might think of like, do I need all of this data? Th these kind of situations you might need to uh, think. And and there isn't one good solution to these problems. But, uh, so there are many. Uh, small solutions that solve some of the problems but usually it's a good idea to think like am i having too many small files that is the biggest issue usually like how can i combine the stuff i have so that i don't have too many small files and the other thing is that how can i make certain that i don't generate too much like data that i don't actually use and and these are usually the the two things that are the biggest problems but but uh yeah uh usually uh everything in the between is is okay but okay so let's let's actually look at what folders you have available uh so this is again uh site specific so not not uh so in 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 triton we have the home folder so uh like as like i said uh you have the home folder and this is uh the quota we have increased, this is a bit out of date. The quota is nowadays like 20 gigabytes. But basically, like the home folder is meant for for like storing uh, some some basic stuff, uh, maybe some programs and stuff like that. And there's a nightly backup on this. Um, then you have your own uh, work directory. So either you go to work directory here. And you will get here, and this has a 200 gigabyte quota uh, or mal one million files. Uh, and then there's uh, project directories for your project. So you might want to ask your, uh, uh, well, people in your group whether you have a project folder. What is how do you organize stuff in your project folder? And if you're working with your collaborators, should you get a project folder together? Uh, that's also a good question. We can create this for you. And uh, the quota is. Nego negotiated with us you basically ask how much you need and we ask why do you need it and then you, if it looks good we just put the quota wherever we want yeah. uh, well whatever you need i mean we basically never say no to quotas but yeah. we make sure you realize what you're doing yeah and yeah yeah, and, and the important thing about these systems, like these high performance systems, is that, is that there's no backup there. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean that the system is like, like I mentioned, there's lots of failovers. Like we can lose an entire server and it, the system shouldn't even go down. We can lose uh, one, a uh, few disks, uh, some like we sometimes do, and the system doesn't, uh, you don't see the, the change anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but, but there's no backup 
protecting against user failure, and that is the most important thing. Like if you run uh, RAM RF and you remove all of your files, they're gone. <laughs> we can't return <laughs> them. And the reason behind this is that like taking backups of the amount of data that we have would require a lot more data. So so in order to keep backups, we would need like uh, have more well a lot more data, and that would create this kind of a situation where where you have less data. So it's basically like, like if, it, if you know about rockets, like if you need, need to send a rocket to the orbit, that's one thing. But if you need to send a rocket to the moon, you first have to send it to an orbit and then you need more fuel to get it to the moon. And then the more you, the longer you want to go, the more fuel you need to add and you, more fuel you need to add basically to, to, to get the fuel there <laughs> where you want it to be. <laughs> So, so uh, it's a similar kind of situation. So, if we add, if we would have backups, we would need more space for the backups, and then we would have less space for the data, and and, and we you end yeah. up into this kind of a you either or kind of a situation. Yeah. And in in this high performance systems, there's usually no backup. So it's usually a good idea to use the the auto provided uh, like these teamwork drives and these project drives there to store like initial data sets, important results, stuff like that, and, yeah. and then do the work in Triton and then move the important stuff uh, that is usually much smaller than the like the temporary stuff, move that away from, uh, from Triton. Yeah. And I guess you could also say like you can't have something both large and backed up, but you can have something large and something backed up. And just like with memory inside of, com of a computer, once you're getting to the scale of doing big things, you have to manage this hierarchy of all these different mm. storage locations and realize this is the important stuff. I'm going to back it up. This is the scratch stuff. It's going on Triton and sums in both. And then you have to keep it managed. And that's yeah, the basically... difficulty of scientific computing, not the executing the program necessarily yeah it's it's kind of like this kind of a trifecta of is it is it fast is it big <laughs> is it secure and usually mm -hmm. like you can get all of these if you have a like huge amount of money but usually like you don't have that kind of money so you need to take few of these and then you have separate systems for these things so basically the auto uh, project folders they are secure and they are uh, a big, well, somewhat big, yeah. uh, and then, but and the Triton side, we have well, we don't have the backups. It's still secure. It's not going to like go away, but but it's it's more in the category of being big and being fast. Mm -hmm. So so basically, we have to take compromises in order to be able to provide the resources that we have, yeah. and this is very common in any system uh, in the world. So basically, you need to think your workflow is true so that you have like what is something you cannot replicate and what is something you can replicate but it just mm -hmm. takes a bit more compute resources to do it so basically if you have initial data the coding of your program is labor intensive that requires lots of time to replicate you want that to be in git somewhere somewhere secure keep it hidden keep it safe somewhere and then you want to have uh, your compute stuff that is or like once you have the code, you have the initial data, you can create like your temporary results for your data, like project. Yeah. And then you analyze those results. And usually that is also labor intensive. Uh, so you want to keep the results secure and safe so that yeah. you can then give it, give them to let's say publications if they need them. Yeah. So what about quotas? How do you figure out how much space you have available? Yeah, that's a good question. So if you run this quota command on the login node, uh, you will see these kinds of out, like depending on how many groups you belong to. I belong to quite many groups, so uh, well, it seems to. Uh, <laughs> is there a problem hang. here? Oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, I think okay. the problem is that it's trying to find all of the groups, but, mm -hmm. but basically you can see, uh, well, for me, there's the home quota that is 20 gigabytes. Uh, then I have the user quota in in the scratch. Uh, it's for me it's a bit, bit larger because I need to 
install all kinds of temporary stuff for solving the problems. And and then you might have these group group quotas. In the future, this will change a bit in Alta side because we are getting a new system and there we will have, we'll have these so-called project quotas, but we'll inform you on that. But basically you should know that there's like difference between stuff that you own and stuff that the project owns. There's also the thing that if you leave, we, uh, if you leave the university, uh, we will like, we, we can't look at your personal data. We won't look at it. Uh, so the home folder and your user folder that is, well, we will at some, some point remove it. And if you, if you want to, it to be removed, we will remove it. That's your data, but the data in the project folders that is owned by the group. So the primary investigator in that case, who owns the group basically. So your professor or something like that. So if you're like a summer student or something like that, if you want your stuff to be available for the other group members, once you leave, you want to store it in the project folder or the or place such as that, because otherwise like it, it's gone, like, like they, they, they get nothing. <laughs> so yeah. It's a good idea to separate what you're going to be working on into separate folders. Yeah. So if we scroll down more and on HackMD, there's a question about the data availability. So um, if you want to access the same data in other places, how does it work? So I know it used to be that traditionally, the uh, like if you needed to access data somewhere else, you had to make copies of it. So you'd copy it to the cluster work, copy it back, copy it to some other storage place. Are things any better now? And do we still need to do things like that? Uh, yeah, so so nowadays, of course, like you can, like you don't, um, like if we think about what Git provides you for you, it, it will keep track of like changes in the data and it uh, changes what happens. But when you are like, and it deals it row by row, basically in the files. But when you're dealing with like big data, big number data and stuff like that, you can easily get into the situation where you have like dot back files somewhere, like lying around every every which way because you're copying data around, and it it gets uh, really complicated. So so usually it's a good idea to get use some of these like. Uh, like uh, already existing mounts to access the original data so you don't need to have like multiple copies of the data running in different places and and confusing you and making life harder for you uh, you can so on many systems like for example in the vdi the, uh, the work directories are mounted in this directory uh, in various uh, department shell servers like basically these uh, proxy hosts, uh, the, the directories are mounted in different places. Uh, if you're working with your uh, on VPN or from your workstation, you can use these Samba mounts to do these. Uh, you can mount these directories directly uh, and and work or like work there. Uh, so basically, access to with with a file browser. Uh, there's uh, various options here. Uh, you can also use, if you're using Linux and you're not using, uh, if you're not using uh, uh, like Samba, if you're not using VPN, you can use this SSH FS to, to basically like get like a file system access to the, to the folder. Uh, it's a bit more laborious usually. And of course you can use tools like, like this SFTP uh, you can use that to basically copy uh, stuff from one folder to another. Um, yeah. There was a question earlier mm -hmm. about on auto managed computers, there is a um, an automatically synced documents and desktop directory. Do we have anything yes. like that? And would you recommend these kind of automatic syncing things for this kind of work? Yeah, so, so usually this... Um, so do you mean like uh, like automatically sync all of your data to to your laptop or something like that? E yeah, I mean, yeah. I because guess. Uh, like usually <laughs> usually it gets into this kind of a situation where 
Like, if you're doing something serious, you don't want to waste your time doing that kind of stuff. Uh, because, like, like usually, I, like, this is my personal ex experience, at least, but, uh, like, that that takes a lot of bandwidth to transfer this data. Usually, it's, like, the information that you need is much smaller than the actual data. And you, like, I would recommend working towards a situation where you can do as much of the data processing and stuff like that on Triton or the cluster itself because then you just have to transfer let's say averages of the like the whole system or uh, like like the only the sometime series or something like that is that is like we're talking of order of megabytes maybe and yeah. that also you can transfer to your computer and then you can visualize them and and work on that so i would highly recommend not like creating <laughs> some sort of like a elaborate rsync mechanism where you like sync stuff back and forwards because that that is bound to like at some point you end up in a situation where you uh, like well either you're constantly copying stuff around that you don't even need or you are like uh, yeah like that's not usually a good idea uh, there are some tools like uh, let's say git a uh, large file system like this support that you mm. can to like auto like it makes certain that when you're syncing stuff, they are similar. But like usually, the easiest solution is just to like, like can I adapt my workflow so that uh, I can just run my stuff in mm -hmm. in let's say Triton so that I don't have to do it. like like for example, personally, uh, like in one of one project I was doing, uh, I had to do plotting on Triton, like plotting, uh, multiple plotting like somewhere, and I just had. I coded on my computer. I made a git repository for my code. I just committed that to to centralized repository. I pulled the repository in Triton, and then I ran a plotting command there, and it did the plotting there. So, uh, and then I just copied the JPEGs back. And it's like it's maybe three commands more, but you don't have to think about like did I did I remember to copy that hundred gigabytes of data to my own computer are these up to date then uh, like it's much easier to usually to adapt your workflow uh, than to the system than fight the system like uh, yeah like I tend to recommend against doing too much automatic data syncing kind of things because if you have small things a few gigabytes yeah you sync it everywhere but as your work grows and grows then things get well, really complex, and it eventually comes back to bite you. Oh, uh, let's see. So, what's next? Well, we have these remote access sections. Did we talk about that? That's that's a good question. I just have to answer this because this is pretty funny. Like this. So, what is the best way to copy files to a cluster directory? For example, CMOS copy work essay. <laughs> so, this copy work essay isn't actually to how to I copy stuff into Triton. That is uh, me testing out how how we are going to copy all of our currently <laughs> existing work directories to the new file system that we have. So, copying the like one petabyte of data that we have. So that's copying the, like the whole work, not my work. Yeah. So I don't have that kind of a script like that I use to sync stuff. Uh, so so basically that is like like we're going to be doing like these massive copying uh, operations it's in the like future. A thousand but, times bigger than what most people yeah. will be doing. Yeah, yeah. Like it will take a week, like multiple days to do the copying and stuff yeah. like that, even with the full file system. <laughs> like we are going to be running on multiple nodes to do the copying but but yeah so so i i personally like i could throw my laptop into a, like a lake and i still would have all of my data somewhere because like i don't want it to be on my laptop because i will lose it i will uh get like it, yeah. it might fail it might like the disk might fail on my laptop i don't want to think about that so i personally like have it stored like important stuff is in the repositories, other stuff is in the file systems that I know about. Like yeah. I don't want to think about did I store my like important data on a drive that I have <laughs> in my like uh, cupboard somewhere. Like that's that's way too much work. It's much easier to keep the data in secure places where you know where it's going to be, and then just access that with some like yeah. uh, access pieces of that data individually. Yeah. 
So what if we, well, with the remaining time we have, I'd propose we talk about these remote mountings, either SMB or SSHFS, explain what they do in general, and maybe we can give people a little bit of time to try yeah. this yourself. Yeah. Like, like try, try doing some sort of like a copying operation to try to just to get like a hang of like one way of getting yeah. data there. So, so personally, I, I use like, like I basically always use like uh, simple copy paste. Like if I just need to copy a few lines of script, I just copy paste it. Mm -hmm. I use Git or I use uh, SCP, but. I rarely copy anything out of the Ryton because yeah. yeah, it's the best place for the work di work data. So, but of course, mm -hmm. uh, mileage varies. Mileage may vary. So, try yeah. different tools. What seems to use most useful for you? And if I do need to access something from Triton outside, instead of copying it out, I'll usually do this remote mount as a network drive. So that way it stays in Triton, but I can access it from outside. So did we already talk about I this? I don't I don't think we talked about it, did we? About which remote mounting? The either SMB or SSHFS. Uh, I mentioned it mentioned it, but yeah, yeah. not not really okay. like like uh, going through the whole steps because like yeah. all of these are like complementary. They're not like you don't mm -hmm. need to know every one of these. Like you can, you just need to figure out one way of getting. Like I personally, I mm -hmm. I nowadays don't use uh, like file browser anymore. Like mm -hmm. I'm just too much into the command line, so I I, <laughs> yeah. I, I have forgotten. But but I know that many people like to do like open uh, use IDEs and open like a mm -hmm. like open file there and go to a folder and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's fine. It's it's way of working with the system and you, you should work with whatever way feels best for you so if you like working with let's say uh, uh, file windows and stuff like that you might want to look into the samba mounting because that's yeah. a similar kind of use use experience if you're working with command lines then the rsync and the scp is probably yeah. best uh, if you're or somewhere that. in between the sshfs might mm -hmm. be similar mm -hmm. and, yeah. and if you feel like um, like like not you don't want to do the copying you want to work closer to the like system uh, then i recommend checking into the vdi and the jupiter and using mm -hmm. those to like do the plotting and mm -hmm. and uh, do the running because then you don't have to you have the mounts already there mm -hmm. but basically like find uh, one way that would work for your workflow you don't need to use all of these tools uh, they are not like required Someone's writing a question. Can I mount the network drive on Hale? Uh, so mounting network drives on the cluster itself is sometimes possible on some clusters, but perhaps not recommended because you don't have administrator access there. And when you, so SSHFS might work as a user, and you can mount something from outside, but you might not be able to unmount it or there might be some other problems. So usually it goes the other way. You mount, well, usually you'd mount data from the cluster onto your local computer for working. Of course, when you need to connect to remote computers, that becomes a little bit um, more difficult. Mm, so I saw a proposal here to do an exercise maybe together or type along and then go to break and then we do slurm intro or maybe slurm intro before the break. Um, so we found that the data transferring tends to be a very difficult thing, more than you might expect or at least something that has more complex than you might expect. So maybe I would propose that we um, give maybe we should have, like yeah, 15 something. or 20 minutes for yeah. like self-work exercises. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we should have like a 15 minutes and then we could return in the stream and discuss about like what's happening in the HackMD, like yeah. what, 
if there's some interesting questions there. Can we give one demonstration of either using rsync or SSH? Yeah, sure. Maybe, and maybe yeah, if can... we can demonstrate rsync once, and then yeah. we demonstrate SSH or SSHFS to show the concept of remote mounting, and then yeah. we're good and can do a break. I think the, the demos would yeah. be important. Yeah, I uh, like. In my case, like I'm not in Alta VPN right now, so let's say I want to copy, uh, like I will create this like a uh, like example.txt that says like uh, says something inside of it, and I want to copy this to Triton. So of course, like when I need to do copy to Triton, uh, I now have to copy through this kind of a like a jump host well mm -hmm. uh like because i'm not in the vpn but like let's say i i i like i can either copy the file first to the jump host and then copy it to triton uh so basically mm -hmm. i can do like uh like i previously made the connection with ssh uh ssh kosh and then ssh triton but i can also like uh I'm in CS department, so we have the like this is CS department specific. So other departments mm -hmm. have your own, but I might go to like this server and hear the um, work directory. Is it here? Uh, okay, it's it's okay. it's broken it's currently. Working. Okay, so this is not a good example. Okay, let's let's okay. I'll try to copy it. Uh, I'll use SS, SCP to copy the example to uh, example to Kosh. Yeah. And when doing tab completion in these directories, please be careful. We don't tab complete usernames of other people. Yeah. So so I just made like this, so it copies into the, the home my home folder. So mm -hmm. and now if I look at Kosh. I have the example here, yeah. and I can uh, SCP this example the txt to Brighton Alto FI, and then I will. So this you can already see that this is pretty laborious. Like this might be like the worst way. Like, I wouldn't use this to copy stuff. Um, Um, you can make this process a bit easier by yeah. by uh, writing these, for example, these SSH configs that automatically right. do the jumping for you. Yeah, like uh, I would so, highly so, recommend yeah. that kind of thing. So, so, so the, that is can... what I what I do. That like I have, uh, let's say, I modify the file. I have specified this uh, jump automatic jumping through this SSH configs. So uh, there, there is instructions on how to do this on the Altos Keycom page, by the way, like yeah. in the SSH configuration page. Uh, so I take SCP example and just do this and it will go through the same, same route. And if I go to here, here I can see that the, the file has to change. Yeah. So, so this okay. is like a simple example of a copying operation. Uh, like, this is something that I use all the time. But, as I said, you don't need to copy what I do. You need to find the way that you want to work. It depends on your software, the way you work, and stuff like that. But the, yes. But yeah, may, yeah mm. we, we'll try to figure this out uh, especially in the like if we have now the exercise session of trying to copy stuff let's let's do that right now and then can you demonstrate sshfs or do you need yeah, a I can try. connection uh, yeah let's try i can also demonstrate that if you'd like yeah if you if you want to take the share because uh, okay. yeah i i don't use that that often so i will okay. probably mess up the commands let's see so here we are um so this is 
my computer. I have some directories here. This is Linux. Uh, these directories I make called Mount Triton. And I have my SSH set up where I can just do SSH Triton and SSH there without any password. And it has the jump host. Let's see, does this work? Okay, this does not work because only Triton is the alias. So now, um, if we use sshfs, the path I want to mount is Triton, or let's say it's Triton um, temp. Let's do the whole thing. Well, I'll do... So you can give some path, either relative to your home directory or absolute path. And I want to mount it in this Triton directory. And if I push enter, it goes. And if I list mount Triton, I see this is what is in my work directory on Triton. And then if I want to unmount it, this should do it. And there we go. So this works in Linux and there's similar things in Mac and I don't know, probably, I think I've seen it in Windows before, but in other operating systems, you might use the SMB mounting instead, which is built in and you, well, it's nicer, but you need to be over the VPN to make it work. So, yeah. Okay, um, so what should we do now? Oh, uh, you're muted. Yeah, uh, so should we have like a 10 minutes of uh, exercises, like people trying to solve this, yeah. uh, sol uh, figure out their way uh, of yeah. uh, And then this. should we resume at, uh, on the hour. Yeah. So yeah. 10 minutes of playing with the remote mounting yeah. and then 10 minutes of break. And if mm. this ends up taking too long, then please let us know and we'll extend the break. Mm. Yeah, we, we'll uh, like at 10, 10 to 3, we'll uh, discuss what's in the HackMD and what's happening. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see, where is HackMD? Let's write our notes. So exercises. And we will do, so what should exactly should we ask people to accomplish? So try Number two, only yeah, so well, I guess if you can do number two, that's good. You can try looking at number one, but there's a lot of advanced things there which are basically not relevant for this course and might be useful later, but it's just not worth our time right now. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so see you in 19 minutes. Bye. Hello, welcome back. So let's see what we've got now. Um, do we have any further follow-up comments from the data storage? So 
maybe the most important thing that I would say is that, yes, this is really complicated. Like, is there any reason that this data storage is so impossible to do and there's so many different things? And well, I mean, maybe there's a reason and the reason is it's just intrinsically complex. I mean, like there's so yeah. many different options here. So we hope that you were able to do something, but we realize this is only a starting point. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll quickly mention that, that basically like like if you think about uh, like any any systems nowadays in like for example like this this uh, setup that we have currently rolling where we have Zoom and we have a uh, uh, Twitch and we have uh, OBS that records it and stuff like that we have many many different places where the data needs to move in order to get it working so there needs to be like uh, good pipes basically <laughs> where the data flows the data flows from one place to another and like we saw in the in the break uh, <laughs> like when the stuff breaks in the internet when the pipes break everybody notices it and 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 these kind of like setting up these kinds of setups yeah is a lot of work and uh, uh, very important work because stuff breaks so you should really think about when you like like even in small scale when you're working yourself you should think about your workflow as like how do i get the stuff where i need to be and how do i get it done like efficiently so that the stuff is where it needs to be and um it's usually a good idea to check what are like what is your workflow what do you want how do you want to work because there's no unfortunately no good one solution for everybody uh, like there's multiple people have different workflows people want different things and and sometimes uh well uh many of these are very different but but usually it's a good idea to think what kind of data transfer you want to do and what kind of stuff you want to uh, like how do you want to work with the data one good uh, hint i can also give is that like like similarly like if you go to let's say uh, to a holiday and you want to take a book with you you don't bring the whole like bookshelf with you you bring the book that you want to read or few mm -hmm. books if you don't know what to read so similarly when you're doing data analysis you don't usually need the whole bullet that you have generated like 100 gigabytes in order to do like data analysis you can take a sample of it or a subset of few time steps or something like that like to give you like a something to to work with on your laptop with that uh might not have the resources that that the cluster in Triton has so you can create mm -hmm. like you can work on that you can fiddle around with that uh, with 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 this like a like a, a representation of the overall data that you have and then when you want to do like serious data analysis you can do it on the site so you don't need to work with the whole thing at, at one time so it's usually a good idea to think about your workflow and and what pieces are you really need? Do you really need the whole bookshelf on your work, <laughs> like laptop? Do you need everything to be everywhere at all the time? And that is like a good thing to think when you're working with these kinds of systems that are spread out. And, yeah. and if you if you think about what you actually need, it, it usually becomes much easier to like manage, and you don't have to think about that anymore. Like uh, you don't, it's it's much clearer in your head where your data is. Yeah. 